Hi, uh, welcome back to my video. Uh, in this video, we're going to be looking at data modeling and uh, what are the things that you need to know before data modeling. I'll be going through uh, the introduction of data modeling and uh, various terminologies. So before I get to the details, um, I need you to imagine that you are an administrative assistant for a school and you have to keep a database on uh, different um, various components that uh, that you can see in a school. So if I have to list out some things the in a school, what, what we would find in a school would be um, teachers. And we would have students. Is that it? No. Uh, we have mm, buses that bring these teachers and students. There are many buses because they don't. They all don't live on campus. They all live outside, and we need buses to get them in. We have the executive staff your principal, your chancellor, um, your, uh, what else, executive staff, you know, the people behind the scenes that keep the organization moving, those kinds, and many, many more. Phew, but you are an administrative assistant and you need to find a really um, organized way uh, to monitor each of these items, right? And that's when, my friend, uh, database management comes to your help and saves, your, saves the day. Uh, so let's see. Um, if we have to focus on teachers, we have uh, teachers, they are the backbone of the school. They are the ones keeping the place alive, right? So we need to uh, focus on teachers. Um, so just writing teachers, will that do anything? No, we need to find various characteristics about teachers. We need to know their first name. We need to know their last name. Because we are actually running a legit school, so we need to know most of these data. Uh, so we also need, let's see, the subject that they teach. Right? Maybe their gender. And of course, their ID. So students aren't the only ones with IDs. Teachers need to have an ID too. Um, so to get started, let's just put, put some few names in. Alright, so I have given a list of names, a list of their subjects, and a list of IDs that caters towards teachers. Um, now, if you see, we have um, the first name, last name, subject, and ID. So, one of the most important things about the ID, or a unique identifier, is that uh, they help us to create a difference between each record. So all of uh, each row is going to be called as a record, and an ID is going to help us differentiate among each record. Now if you see our first teacher here, who is our math uh, professor, his name is Andrew, and our English professor here in the second record, his name is also Andrew. So it's really hard to just um, identify teachers by their first name uh, because there are teachers who will have the same name and uh, just identifying by their first name will lead to chaos. So it's really important that we have an ID that helps us to differentiate among all the teachers, right? Because ID is the only thing that is unique and helps us to identify among different records. So that's that. Now, we have teachers, but teachers aren't the only ones in the school. Teachers have to teach someone. They have to correspond with someone. That's going to be students. So let's just have a table for students. All right? I'll get back to you on that in a second. All right, so I have created a database for students. We have a list of students, and if you found these names familiar, uh, yes, that's because I've watched Brooklyn Nine-Nine too, so Nine-Nine. 
Uh, okay, so back to database uh, modeling. So in students, do we have uh, different characteristics, right? We have their names, their first name and their last name, um, this, the, which standing they are in, and also their unique identifier. So what you need to know is that every um, table, this is a table for teachers as well. Every table uh, will have um, a unique identifier that helps them, that helps us, uh, administrative assistants, to differentiate among various students so that we can avoid confusion and there is, it's coherent and it's easy to um, understand uh, what, which standing a student is and what they need and uh, various uh, d data that is associated with each student. So the ID is the one that needs to be unique. Now, what are these things? If we have to give a certain names for it, what would that be? Now, now this is a table, and this is also a table. Uh, this ta we, in this table, we are focusing on teachers, right? So our main, we want to make a model on teachers, and uh, we want to know more about them. They are very concrete. We are focusing only on teachers, and um, it represents something for the long term so in this this is known as the entity right so in this case can you help me identify which is an entity i just pulled the dora the explorer thing out on you i just said what i hope an entity is so uh yeah you're right the entity in this case will also be um students so students are going to be the entity so how do I how do we identify an entity? An entity is something that we want to know more about, right? And they are very relevant. They are concrete, and we need to make a model about uh, the data that the data that is here that is about students. It's a group of something. It's very relevant, and this is what we want to model. So this, the main thing is known as entity. It's a specific product or item that focuses on this. Right? Okay. Is that it? No. We have uh, certain characteristics here that helps us to know more about our entity. We know that our, our teachers have a first name. We know that our teachers have a last name. We know that they teach a subject and also they have an ID. So what do you think we can call these um, these references, these column references? What, what do you think they can be called? Um, well, uh, this is going to be known as the attributes. The first name, the last name, the subject, the ID. Sorry, I had a gender here before, but then uh, I wanted to control the space that I changed it, uh, changed gender to ID. So just ignore that. So all of this, the first name, the last name, the subject, the ID, they are known as attributes. They help us to know more about the entity. Uh, they they give us more characteristics they give more depth and layer to the entity they give meaning to the entity because if we just have the entity teachers that doesn't do really anything that's just teachers that's just um kindergarten that's just teachers that's right here this is where we were right just with entity but our attributes helps us to know more about the entity they help us to know about their names what they what they teach and their ids right so in the same way, um, here we have some attributes too. Can you help me identify which are the attributes? Oh man, Dora's gonna be, Dora the Explorer, she's gonna be so proud of me. Oh my god. Um, sorry, so the first name, the last name, the year, and the ID, all of this, they also are the attributes. They help us know more about the students. Amy Santiago, Raymond Hull, Gina Linetti, they give names, they give an identity uh, to the entity. And so another thing you should know that every table, every entity, every entity at the table, the table itself is known as the entity. Just to uh, make it more clear for you, the table is known as the entity. And every entity will have a unique identifier. So we can pick out a teacher based on a unique identifier. Same way for students or any other table for that matter, you'll have an uh, unique identifier or the primary key. 
Okay, but is that it? No, we are in a school and we need to create a correlation or, um, or association between two entities. How do we create that? Well, um, I can't explain that to you in this video right now, but what you need to know is that there is a term to make sure that two entities have a correlation or dependency. So that's going to be known as relationship. As simple as that. A relationship helps um, entities to be linked towards each other. They give, as the, name, as the name says, it provides a relationship between two entities. They give a wider meaning. They help to connect two things. And you can do so much more with data modeling when you establish a relationship. So to sum up, we have our entity, right? They are, they are basically like nouns. They are name, place, animal, things, anything. And those are going to be the entity, the table name. And various entity, and this entity is going to have certain attributes uh, that helps us to know more about the entity. And every entity will have a unique identifier where we can uh, pick out each record because there are chances that um, the uh, most attributes uh, will result in uh, records having the same names. And that's going to lead to confusion. So to avoid that, we have a unique identifier. Why do you think that's why do you think we have IDs in schools then so that it can be easy for them to track uh, everything about a student based on their ID? That's why in most situations, they don't even ask your name, they ask for your ID. So it's really that important. Uh, I'm sorry for repeating this, um, but I just had to let it out. Uh, so yeah, and in the same way, here as well, uh, the students are the entity, the various characteristics, they're known as the attributes, they help us to know more about uh, the entity and the various characteristics, and to link uh, to uh, two entities or to make, a, uh, to make an association uh, between two entities, we have to make a relationship. Sometimes there might not be a relationship and that's okay, but uh, we need to identify when the question states uh, to create a relationship, we need to know which entity needs to be related. Uh, so thank you for watching this introduction on data modeling. Um, my next video will help you to actually draw ER diagrams, that is entity relationship diagrams. And uh, watch out for that video. Uh, thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel. Bye.